Okay ladies and gentlemen, we're back with a NAS Mini PC review. This time we're looking at the GMK Tech G9. This is an entry level NAS using only M.2 drives and GMK Tech's first effort in the NAS space. It's a very small 4 bay NAS made with a mix of a metal middle section and plastic on the top and bottom. It feels suitably budget and looks like a mini PC but its focus is as a network assisted storage device and that's what you use it for as there are better options for regular mini PCs unless you need the multiple storage drives. GMK Tech includes a compact USB-C power supply, power cable, visa mount and HDMI in the box. The G9 comes with built-in 64GB eMMC storage and 12GB of LPDDR5 memory. So if you need more memory, this is not the NAS for you. Pricing starts at $200 US dollars, or you can get it with an additional SSD for extra. With the one terabyte model I'm reviewing coming in at 250 US dollars. Interestingly, you'll get Windows 11 Pro on the one terabyte drive if you buy it, while Ubuntu is installed on the 64 gigabyte eMMC storage. I'm not sure how useful either will be to most users, but you can always install something like TrueNAS instead. Anyway, I did check the Windows OS bundled with the G9 and it was malware free. Opening it up to add M.2 drives is painless as it should be. You can see it's all plastic here. And there's no ventilation on the drive cover, which isn't an odd choice, it's a flaw. As you can imagine, four drives generate quite a bit of heat. Anyway, two screws to remove, lift the lid up, and we're in. The first slot is occupied by the one terabyte drive which comes with a heatsink. All four slots are M.2 Gen 3 X2, with the last one also supporting M.2 SATA. What this means is that all the drives will max out at around 1.8 gigabytes per second sequential read and write if everything is working perfectly. But things aren't so simple. You've got the limitations of the network ports amongst other things. I did pull apart the G9 further and under the plastic tray is the M.2 wireless card, CMOS battery and a couple of fans. Why aren't these fans on the M.2 drives? Good question. That's all I got. For an ass, it comes with plenty of ports. The front has a power button and it's a good time to point out that for wireless and Bluetooth, an Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX101 is used. The side has three 10 gigabit USB 3 ports. The back has a USB-C power port and that's all it is. No display or data. We also have a 3.5mm audio jack, dual Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, dual HDMI 2.0 and a full featured USB-C 10 gigabit data port. And yes, you can use it with one USB-C cable for power and display. I'm planning to level up my networking gear to be able to properly test the throughput in the future. But for now, we're going with performance benchmarks which will also separate this review from all the others out there already. Since all my mini PC reviews are benchmarked in Windows, I'm doing the same here for the bananas to bananas comparison. And out of the box, single core performance in Cinebench is dismal, with the lowest result in the chart. Luckily, this can be easily fixed by enabling C states in the BIOS, which is covered in the BIOS section. After that, the G9 performs okay. Why isn't it enabled by default? Again, good question. Multicore isn't great either out of the box, doing below average numbers. The only way to improve it is by upping the power limit in the BIOS. And after doing that, we get a score around 2900, which is decent. Geekbench does a variety of CPU tests and shows the same single core result as Cinebench, that being last place. After C states is enabled, we're in better performance territory. Multicore is average out of the box and increasing the power limit gets a slight improvement. Still a bit away from the Morphine M8S. Now we're testing encoding a H.264 video file with Ambrake and the results are pretty similar. Nothing great out of the box and decent with a higher performance power limit setting. Switching it up to hardware video encoding which uses Intel's QuickSync and the result isn't great with the G9 being the worst performer out of the minis tested so far. DDR5 memory helps the G9 pass 1500 in 3D Max Firestrike which doesn't happen if it's DDR4. The Time Spy result also matches the other DDR5 and 150 minis, while the Steel Nomad Light result is slightly behind the others. So not the fastest N150 around, 
but performance is fine once you make the bias tweaks at the expense of high attempts and power draw, which we'll cover later. The 1TB TWSC NVMe drive included with a review sample had the best result of any SSD tested in a budget mini PC, with 3 Mark's storage benchmark. On the other hand, the eMMC is the slowest, getting close to matching the lowest M.2 SATA result. It's fine for something like TrueNAS, and definitely faster than a USB flash drive. While the 30 minute thrash test temperature was fine for the SSD, there was only one drive inside, so this metric isn't going to be useful for a NAS. You can bet that 4 drives is going to be toasty within the enclosed space with no ventilation running 24-7. Heat sinks will help, but I'd also keep the lid off. An idle power draw of 11 watts from the wall puts the G9 on the high end. Adding an extra 3 storage drives is going to increase it. The maximum power draw jumped by 7 watts when changing the power limit, and power consumption is very similar to other N150 minis. The N150 CPU in the G9 gets hot when under load with both power modes, and the metal midsection of the G9 heats up. Only reason I mention it is that the heat there is dissipating, while it won't do nearly as well on the plastic underneath, which the four M.2 slots are enclosed in. Fan noise is surprisingly low on the G9, beating out other GMK Tech budget minis. But with CPU temp being so high, it's not a win-win situation. The Valorant test is done for my amusement. No, seriously though, it's to check secure boot implementation and Wi-Fi stability. Both are fine. Using the 5G band tested at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router had no connection issues or dropouts reported. Bluetooth range is also decent with 6 meters or 20 feet coming in at about average. Even with 4 M.2 slots, this mini PC is still compact coming in at around average budget mini PC volume. I'd say too compact considering the heat generated. To get into the BIOS, mash the delete key on startup. On the main page, you can set the power limit from balance to high performance. Wake on LAN and auto power on are already set, but one setting everyone should be applying is C states. You can find that in power management controls. And C states is disabled, so enable it, save and exit, and profit. Hardware monitor allows the CPU fan curve to be modified. So we've looked at this review differently than others. The networking throughput has already been covered elsewhere, and now we've looked at the performance side. So let's cover the pros and cons. Jim Ktex G9 is an interesting affordable entry level NAS which best suits those not needing mass amounts of storage as M.2 drives aren't cheap. Opening it is simple, and the included 1TB NVMe, if you decide to get it, is a good performer. Fan noise is also low. However, the G9 runs hot both out of the box and with a higher power limit enabled. There's no ventilation for the four SSDs, let alone active cooling, which is a blunder on GMK Tech's part. They have been including cooling for SSDs on the mid to upper range minis for a while now, yet not here, where it's definitely needed. So that's the GMK Tech G9, an interesting first attempt at a budget NAS that doesn't quite get there. It's linked in the video description if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in a workstation mini PC, check out the GMK Tech Knuckbox K10, which you can find right here. Cheers!